You can't make me film this video if I don't want to. It's my choice. But if you don't help with the video, our Conquering Debate series is going to take way longer to make. Well, that doesn't matter. My principled freedom of choice outweighs your practical benefit. All right, this will make Maddie talk. She loves talking about principles. You're right, Maddie. I'll respect your freedom of choice. I'll just get somebody else to help with our principled arguments video. Principles? Well, I really like principles. Fine, I'll help. Hey everyone, welcome back to our Conquering Debating series. My name is Alex. And I'm Maddie. Today, we're going to be looking at principled arguments. Principled arguments are arguments based on the moral or ethical ideas behind points. They're often based around the core values in today's society. So bodily autonomy, freedom of speech, or freedom of choice. Principled arguments ask why something is morally good to do or why it's acceptable. And practical arguments explain logically why it will or won't work. So it's always good to have both in your team's case. Exactly. Principled arguments are very useful to show that even if there is a practical benefit, that the moral or ethical objection can still outweigh it. Or vice versa, a principled argument can use to show that even if there isn't any practical benefit or there's only a small one, that we can still do something because it's the right thing to do. So let's break down the four key steps to writing a principled point. You need to explain what the principle is. This should be a one sentence description that makes it clear to the adjudicator what principle you'll be relying on for this argument. For example, simply stating, my first argument will be based on freedom of choice. Step number two, why is this principle important? This step can take time and practice to nail, but it is really important to identify and explain why the principle you're discussing is actually important. When you're doing this step, you don't need to link it to the topic just yet. Just explain more generally why it's an important principle. You then need to ask, why does it apply here? After establishing the importance of the principle, the speaker then needs to explain why the principle is important important in the context of the topic. This is often, but not always done, by linking the stakeholder to the principle and specifically in a way that they're impacted and need to be protected. And finally, link back to the topic. This is exactly the same as practical points, just a one sentence link back to the topic. Let's go through how a principal argument might be explained, using the topic that we should ban contact sports, for example, boxing and rugby. Let's say we're on the negative side and we're running up principled arguments that people have the right to choose to play these sports. Using step one, the principle here is that banning contact sports is a violation of an individual's right to bodily autonomy. It is crucial because everybody has the right to do what they want with their body because they understand the risks involved and they know what's going to make them most happy. The principle here applies because people have knowledge of the risks involved and therefore are able to make an informed choice themselves about whether or not they would like to partake in the sport. Therefore, because people have right to bodily autonomy, they should be allowed to make decisions about them. And based on this, we should not ban contact sports. And that's our introduction to principled arguments. Thank you for joining us, Maddie. I do enjoy principles. Make sure you try and incorporate some into your next debates. And make sure you check out our other videos and like and subscribe to see more fun tips and tricks from us. See you next time. Bye.